All right, this is my guide to helping out in the OR during your OBGYN and surgery rotations, all the things that I wish I knew before I started my third year medical school rotations, and lots of tips and tricks that I feel like aren't really taught to medical students, and you just have to learn uh, by like a trial of fire. And I'm gonna share all those tips with you guys here in this guide today, and really, hopefully, it's gonna help you be a stellar medical student the best medical student for your team and really help out a ton while you're in the OR. I'm gonna split this into a series of different phases. So first is gonna be how to help while you're waiting for the patient in pre-op. Second is gonna be while they're rolling back to the OR. Third is what to do once they're in the OR. Four, I'm gonna talk briefly about how to scrub in and scrubbing etiquette. And five, how to help out while you're in the procedure and things to look out for. And finally, how to help out post-operatively. So let's just get started. First, we're gonna be talking about pre-op. And in pre-op, there's gonna be a few things that you're gonna be doing. So first, you're gonna be doing something called bird dogging, or that, at least that's what I was taught. And this is where you're gonna be waiting for the patient and waiting to see when they roll back to the OR. And that way you can text your resident to let them know to start heading to the OR themselves. Secondly, you definitely need to read up about the patient and you need to read their chart because I have seen way too many times where a medical student went into the OR, didn't know anything about the patient, got yelled at by the attending and kicked out of the OR. So you need to definitely avoid that. Even though sometimes you'll go in, you'll just read the OR board and it says 7.30 a.m. laparoscopic appendectomy and it seems really simple. You need to read about the patient, need to know about them and know about their history for sure. Third, you should prep for pimp questions. So I really liked using the book Surgical Recall for this. So I would would read about this procedure, know what steps we're going to do, and know what the most common pimp questions are once they're, they're heading into the OR. So this is a very valuable use of time while you're waiting for the patient to go back into the OR. Finally, you need to go and introduce yourself to the patient. So usually I would go there, try and establish a little rapport and say, hey, my name is uh, Conan. I'm a third year medical student. I'm mainly gonna be observing and helping out with minor things in the operating room. And then once you're done, I'll be helping take care of you once you're in the hospital. And so this is basically just letting them know that you're not gonna be the one doing any operating on them. You're just gonna be helping out with minor things because they're justifiably a little bit wary about a medical student doing any procedural stuff on them. Uh, and then it's establishing a little bit of rapport before you go into the OR. Next, let's talk about when the patient starts rolling back to the OR. So a couple key tips here is one, once you pass the red line and you are in the OR hallway, you always need to have a hairnet, something that I wasn't told until I was yelled at multiple times. Once you go into the OR room, you need to put on a mask. And then my next tip is to always, always introduce yourself to the scrub nurse and the circulating nurse because medical students who don't do this, you're not going to look good. They're not going to help you out. You really need to introduce yourselves to them and make sure you know their names. Make sure to know your resident's glove size number and go and grab gloves for yourself and your resident. And then finally, if your resident is short, uh, it's very helpful if you grab them a step stool. All right, so let's say this is the pre-op area. So there's just a bunch of beds here, and this is where you're gonna be bird dogging. You're gonna have you're gonna be basically at a computer somewhere over here, and you're gonna be bird dogging, you're gonna be reviewing the patient's chart, you're gonna be reviewing their case. And then let's say this is the OR hallway, and what you're gonna find is that there is a red line here. So once you pass this red line, you need to put your scrub cap on. Next is gonna be the actual OR room. So this is the operating room and there's gonna be an OR table here in the center. There's usually gonna be another computer and there's gonna be a nurse standing next to it, kind of in regular scrubs. This is gonna be the circulating nurse. And then you're gonna have a nurse that's standing over here that's scrubbed in, all sterilized. This is gonna be the scrub nurse or the scrub tech. And then usually at the head of the bed, you're gonna find anesthesiology. So once you walk past these OR doors right here, this is when you need to put on a mask. And the first things I like to do is I like to go up to the circulating nurse and the scrub nurse and introduce myself to them and get their name. And if it's your first time in the OR or one of your first times, you should definitely let them know that you're kind of new to this and that you're willing to accept any tips and basically just let them know that it's your first time so they'll help you out and make sure that you don't break any of the protocols or sterility or anything like that. The other thing I like to do is that there's a board here and I like to write the resident's name and then write your name as well so that everybody can keep track of who is gonna be in the procedure. Next, you will wanna know your resident's glove size. So outside, there's usually gonna be a cart with different glove sizes. And so you wanna go out to the cart grab them and then give them to the scrub nurse, okay? So for example, maybe your resident wears a size 7.5 glove and then a size seven glove and say you wear size eight and a 7.5. And usually the convention is that the inner glove is gonna be half a size greater than the outer glove. So once you go and get these and provide it to the scrub nurse, what I want you to do is just open it up and let the scrub nurse grab it from you. Don't drop it directly onto their sterile field because they don't trust you yet to maintain sterility. So first you wanna build their trust, just open it up and let them grab it from you. If your resident is short, obviously, like I mentioned before, you wanna find these small step stools that can be really, really helpful uh, because then you can bring the step stool over here and get that ready for your resident and they'll really appreciate that. 
All right, so now let's talk about how to help out once the patient has arrived to the OR. So one of the first things you can help out with is with transferring the patient from their hospital bed to the OR table. You also wanna stand at any location where the patient may potentially fall because it's always gonna be on the medical student to kind of be in these areas to keep the patient safe. That's definitely one of your roles. You can also do a variety of things to help prepare the procedure. So you can get these uh, arm boards or armrests and attach them to the OR table. You can get warm blankets for the patient. You can get SEDs and help put them on uh, the patient's legs and plug them in. You can help put the safety belt onto the patient. You can help take the bed out of the operating room once the patient is transferred to the table. And also you can help put Foley's in if it's gonna be a longer procedure and also shave the patient's skin uh, in case there's an area with a lot of hair. Okay, so let's say that the patient has rolled into the OR. So this is gonna be the patient's bed and the patient is here. Okay, so one of the things you can do first is help transfer the patient over to the table. Uh, otherwise, if you're not uh, comfortable with that, the very uh, minimal thing you can do is just kind of stand on the opposite side of the operating table because this is kind of exposed and there's no guardrails over there. So by you standing there, you're actually going to protect the patient from falling off of the table. Next, uh, there's going to be a safety belt, which you can help learn to strap onto the patient. There's also going to be these armrests that are usually lying somewhere on the floor, and you can help attach these armrests to the uh, table like this. So make sure you ask the circulating nurse or your residents how to do this. And this can be something that you do basically every time you go into the OR, you can help your team set up the armrests. Going back to where you got those gloves, there's usually these warm uh, blanket warmers outside. And it's really helpful if you as a medical student go out and grab uh, some of these for the patient because the patient's usually gonna be naked at this point. Uh, and so getting some warm towels and warm blankets for them is really gonna be helpful. And like I said, there's also the sequential de compression devices that you can help strap on to the patient's legs like this. And lastly, make sure you really help out uh, with taking the, the bed outside of the OR. Usually you just place it in the hallway somewhere, make sure you lock the wheels, this is usually the medical student's job, so you're going to be expected to help with uh, taking out the bed. But if you can do all these other things that I mentioned, you will really, really be looking like a rock star because people are going to be like, wow, how does this medical student know to do all these different things to help uh, get the procedure started? All right, the next phase is when the resident or attending is going to tell you to start scrubbing. So usually outside of the hall, there's going to be this big sink and you're going to start scrubbing. So I would definitely watch uh, some of the videos on how to scrub, okay? But there's a couple of things that are really key for when you're scrubbing. Number one is you need to scrub for a long time and you should never finish scrubbing before your resident or attending. And then number two is basically I'm just going to go over some key tips for scrubbing and maintaining sterility. So first, make sure you go onto YouTube and learn how to scrub. The basic principles of it are you're going to get a povidine iodine uh, scrub or a chlorhexidine scrub and you're basically going to wash your nails for about 10 seconds on each side, then in between the fingertips for about 10 seconds, and then finally up and down up to the elbow for about 30 seconds. And key point about when you're rinsing off with water at the very end is that you want to put your hands like this and rinse them kind of in this direction. Have the water running down your hand like this. So that way all the dirty water is going to flow off your elbow like that. You do not want to wash your hands with your hands facing down because once you're washing the stuff on your elbow, there's kind of dirty contaminated stuff there and you're basically going to be washing all of that dirty stuff onto the parts you've already sterilized. So you always want to be rinsing off with your hands facing upwards. The second key part of the etiquette is that you should never finish scrubbing before your attending or resident, even if you started scrubbing before them. There's a couple reasons for this. So first of all, you never want to be the person who's, you know, finishing scrubbing really quickly and then they're not sure if you actually did a good job scrubbing and getting sterile or not. But it, more practically speaking is that the attending and the resident should always finish scrubbing before you because they're going to go in and they're going to get gowned by the scrub nurse and you don't want to be the first person getting gowned because you're going to slow down that whole process and the resident and the attending are the ones who start really prepping the procedure up. So by you cutting the line, it's really going to slow down the start of the procedure. So make Make sure you never finish before uh, the attending and the resident. Once you're finished scrubbing, keep in mind that everything from your elbow up is now sterilized. So you are not allowed to touch anything. You're going to be dripping wet at this point. So basically what you're going to do is you are going to walk into the OR room backwards. You're going to use your back to open the door handle. The scrub nurse is going to hand you some sterile towels so you can dry yourself off. And then they're going to help get you gowned and then also put your gloves on. Once you're fully sterilized, now you have this area that basically runs from your neck to your waist. And this rectangular area is somewhere you should not let your hands go out of because if you reach too high or reach too low, uh, you're basically going to be breaking sterility. 
One really useful thing to do is just kind of hold your hands to your chest like this or kind of uh, grasp your hands like this. So this will remind you not to touch anything that's not sterile. And then another thing that you can really help out with at this point is that there are these sterile light handles that you can put onto the OR lights and that will allow you guys to maneuver them. So that's another thing you can help out with as a medical student once you're sterile. All right, so now let's talk about how you can help out during the actual procedure. So the number one rule is that you should never, ever, ever take anything or touch anything on the nurse's mayo stand. So what is the mayo stand? The mayo stand is basically this blue table that's gonna be over the surgical field and it's gonna contain all of the tools and equipment necessary for the procedure. And the scrub nurse is taking very close note and keeping track of everything that's on there. So medical students are never really allowed to touch anything on there. You're never allowed to just grab something randomly off there because you are gonna make it very difficult for the scrub nurse to keep track of what's on there. So it's considered very bad etiquette uh, and just basically a big no-no to touch anything on that stand. So don't touch anything on there. Wait for the scrub nurse to hand you it. Regarding the start of the procedure, one of the main things that medical students are expected to do is to hold on to the suction. And the first thing they usually do is they open whatever area they're going to go into with a scalpel, and then they use a bovi or electrocautery to further uh, go through the fascia. And when this happens, you'll start seeing a lot of burning um, and smoke. And one of the things you can do with the suction that's very helpful and prevents smoke from getting in everybody's noses and lungs is actually holding the uh, suction around the bovi and just sucking up a lot of that smoke before it goes and fills the room. And the way to do this is hold it kind of upside down so you're not obscuring anybody's vision, but you're still providing a little bit of suction to help uh, get rid of that smoke. As they proceed further down the skin and through the fascia, you want to always be anticipating what the next step of the procedure is because at any time they may ask you what layer of fascia we're in, what anatomical structure are we seeing, and this is only going to get better and better as you go through the same procedure over and over and just always be anticipating what the next possible pimp question is because this is going to be the key way for you to answer confidently and get questions right. At this point, once you're through the fascia, they're usually going to hand you a retractor and it's going to be medical students' job to hold the retractor. There's a couple things about retracting that you should know about. One is the process of towing in. And this basically means they want you to grab a bigger piece of uh, fascia and just kind of pull it back even further. So you towing in is when you kind of increase the angle, grab a little bit more of that tissue and then pull it back like that. And the other thing is you also, again, like I said before, anticipate what the next step is going to be. So if you see the surgeons trying to go in one particular direction and trying to get a little bit more work done in a certain area, you want to start gently moving your retractor in that area so that they don't have to ask you to move the retractor. You want to be doing it on your own. And they'll be very impressed that, wow, this medical student is really paying attention. They don't need to be asked to move the retractor. They're already kind of anticipating what the next step is going to be. Your role as a medical student is also going to be uh, blotting blood. Um, you know, so you're always free to take a sponge uh, and just you know, if there's any blood, you want to take that suction and suction it out. Or if it needs a little bit of sponge work and some pressure, take a sponge and just blot that area so that you give the surgeons good exposure and that they have a very clear visibility of what they're doing. The other key thing is that Bovis, the electrocautery device, does not work when there's a lot of blood around. So that's why you need to be suctioning and being very proactive with putting your sponge in and making sure that you're keeping all the area dry for the surgeons. Another thing you can help with is that as the surgical field is moving, sometimes you're going to need to adjust the overhead light. So again, another thing to do that's really great without being asked is just adjust the overhead light so it's always giving the best uh, light exposure to the surgical site as possible. And then in my opinion, uh, I really try to avoid asking too many questions in the OR because first of all, you never know if it's a good time if to ask a question. Uh, for example, if something serious is going on or a very important step is about to be done. So if you are going to ask a question, usually it's good to preface it with, hey, is now a good time to ask a question? But the other reason that I think asking too many questions is not a great idea in the OR is because uh, it opens up a your you to be pimped, which may reveal knowledge deficits, or it might open up your resident to be pimped. And if your resident doesn't get it right, then you're going to make them look bad. And if you're ever looking, you're making your resident look bad, uh, that's not they're not going to give you a favorable evaluation. So you don't want to be doing that. Uh, and you may just be kind of too distracting in the OR environment. Um, if you are going to ask a question, the types of questions that I favor asking uh, are kind of preference questions, like asking the surgeon or the attending, hey, uh, how do you feel about doing this procedure this way? Or what is your personal preference for doing this? So this really helps because it's not something 
something they can pimp you on because it's their personal preference, but it gives you a little bit more information about the procedure. It also strokes their ego a little bit because you're asking them how they like to do things. Uh, and it's just a really good way to be engaged, but without opening yourself to getting pimped or getting your resident pimped. In general though, like I said, I kind of avoided asking questions 99% of the time. Uh, you may have different success if you're more social or charismatic, or if you're very, very confident about the procedure and can ask very complicated questions, but definitely make sure you're not asking super basic questions that make it seem like you don't know what's going on. All right, and then besides suctioning, retracting, uh, blotting blood and things like that, uh, it is also your responsibility to cut sutures. So towards the end of the case, uh, they're gonna start suturing up the patient and closing uh, la layers of fascia. And the key thing that you need to do is that whenever you see a resident or attending tying a knot, you would need to immediately be asking the scrub nurse to be holding a pair of scissors. Um, and this is basically an expectation for you. So anytime you see somebody tying a knot, grab a pair of scissors. Before you cut the suture, definitely clarify with the resident or the attending how long they would like the suture to be cut. And also try to cut it at a slight angle so that re further reduces the chance that you're going to actually cut the knot itself and undo the whole suture, right? You want to give yourself ample space as well as an angle to really reduce the risk of cutting the suture entirely. And then finally, as the patient's getting closed up, uh, this is an opportunity where if you did a good job during the procedure, you may get opportunities to help close or tie a few knots or sutures yourself. And so this is where practice outside of the OR, your knot tying skills is a very huge thing that you should be doing uh, constantly. Uh, you can learn either the one-handed knot or the two-handed tie. And personally, I always learn the two-handed tie because there are some attendings who will not want you to be doing one-handed ties. But either way, just make sure you are very confident with your knot tying skills. And I've talked with a lot of my friends who are in surgical residencies, and they've said that this is actually one of the biggest areas that medical students can shine, is if you can show that you are very confident and very good at tying knots, this is one of the things that can impress residents the most. So this is a huge skill that you want to make sure you're working on outside of the OR. Lastly, once the procedure is over, this is a really good time to help clean up the patient, wipe off any dried blood on their skin, and just really make the patient presentable so they don't wake up and have all this dried blood everywhere. So that's another thing that you can help out with at the end of the procedure. All right, and now let's talk finally about post-op. So the procedure is finally over. So what are some things that you can help with? Okay, so once the procedure is over, it's basically removing all the stuff that you started putting on, okay? So you can take the armrests and put them back where they were. You can take the um, SCDs off and power off the machine. Uh, usually you wait until the patient is extubated before you do that. You can help take this belt off. And then also you want to help move the patient back to uh, their bed. You're just going to get used to it as they do this process over and over. But there's the sheet that they use to uh, help transfer the patient over. And so you may be responsible for removing the sheet under the patient. Or you're going to be the person holding onto the legs as the patient transfers over to their hospital bed. One key thing, as uh, I mentioned before, you know, when the patient came in, uh, is that if there's ever any exposed side where there's no guardrail, you need to make sure you're standing there so that you are providing a buffer against the patient from falling off the table. And this is something that the circulating nurses and the scrub nurses, they're always going to ask you to do this. And so if you're doing it preemptively and nobody has to ask you to do this, it's going to make you look really uh, aware and like, you know, what you're, what you're doing, which you do. Finally, uh, before I leave, I always make sure to say thank you to the circulating nurse and the scrub nurse, because you are very frequently going to be working with these same people. And so you really should try to learn their name and know who they are and make sure to say thank you to them every time you finish a case. Uh, very, very important to build good rapport with them because you're going to be working with them so much. They're going to be the ones who are helping you out the most, making sure you're not making any mistakes and also treating you nicely when you're in the OR working with them. So definitely, definitely make sure you thank the circulating nurse and the scrub nurse before you leave. After that, you're going to take the patient and you're going to walk with the anesthesiologist, okay? And a couple things you can do, there's an IV pole that you can help um, put in the upright position so you can have the anesthesiologist hang the IV bag there. There's a nasal cannula that sometimes gets placed on patients and you can help the anesthesi anesthesiologist place that on the patient. And then finally, you're going to be at the head of the bed, helping navigate the patient back into the ACU or the post anesthesia care unit. Basically, you're going to help open the doors. You're going to help redirecting the bed as you're navigating the hallways. And you're going to walk with the anesthesiologist to get the patient safely to the PACU. And lastly, all patients who come out of the OR should have a four hour post operative check. So if you also do this without the residents asking, you can give a quick update to your residents four hours after the surgery. How's the patient doing? Are they waking up? Are they making urine? Uh, and just generally, give a sense of uh, the patient's recovery. And this is something that's super helpful for you to do as a medical student. The last thing that I want to let you know is that after all the procedure is over and the case is over, this is the best time to ask a resident 
Uh, what were things that you could have done better? What were things that you could have helped out with a little bit more? I find that sometimes people ask residents, oh, how can I help out with the case before the case happens? And residents are only going to be able to give you very generic or vague answers because they don't really know uh, what you're going to do when you're in the OR. But after you've done everything, you've done all the things you helped out with setting up the table, moving the patient, being a really good retractor and using the suction and the, and the sponges to blot out blood uh, and also cutting sutures. Uh, basically, if you do a stellar job on that and then you ask them next time, you know, what are some things I could do better? They're going to be able to offer you very specific advice of how you can help out even more on future procedures. And uh, they're also going to probably give you really good feedback of how much you helped out in the OR. So these are definitely a huge bunch of tips that I wish I knew when I was a third year medical student on my surgery and OBGYN rotations. Uh, I think if you knew all of these things going into your surgery rotation, it's really going to make you look like an all-star. And uh, there are so many things that you know we don't get taught in medical school and you just have to learn basically on the on the fly so i hope these were useful tips for you if you have any other useful tips please leave them down in the comments down below and if these were helpful please let me know as well i really hope this uh, helps you get honors in this rotation uh, i hope it helps smooth the process of going to the or because it is a very intimidating place it's an entirely different world and so knowing just kind of the etiquette and the expectations of you before going in i think is really going to help you a lot all right if you like this content please check out my other medical school guides. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.